Secret Friends Unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 500, half a millennia. Here we are, 10 years later. We are ready to do this show. This is your guide to the geek side. It's been a journey. It's been myself, Todd Oxford, Charlie Carden, along the way. We haven't killed each other. We're not like the Beatles where Yoko Ono got in the middle of this. Mm. We have made shows. We've done video. We've done audio. We've done been all around the world. We've done Patreon. Yeah. Uh, and you know, oh I my think goodness, the fact that we're not in the same room, and we do all. We've had definitely some time when we're doing the show that we're screaming at each other because we're working our show. Yes. And, and yep. I'm sure some podcasts they record that, and it's, it's like the official uh, uh, therapy uh, podcast of Secret to, Friends United. Listen to the host uh, work out their issues of guys that you know see each other maybe once a year because they live in different states. But uh, yeah, yeah, this is wild. I, uh, you know, comparing the relationships and or activities uh, that I've done longest in my life. I have a 24 year old son. I have a 24 year old stepson who I raised from age 12. Uh, I have a 17 uh, year old son, 19 year old son. Little enough math, math, math. Um, I've been married. I've been with April for 12 years. Married for 11, uh, and um, we've been doing the show for 10 years. So no, I'm sorry. I've been with April. For ten, I've been married for 10 years because we got married in July 14. We started this show uh, on the 14th of September of 2014. So, and I had seen you, and we didn't talk about doing this, but I had seen you. You came to our wedding, which was great, in uniform, yep. which was awesome. Yep. Um, and it must have been a subsequent conversation, obviously, over the next three months, because your background is you had been on a show earlier in 2014 maybe 2013 all the gamer chat which is yeah. gone uh right. one of the hosts well the funny part was charlie uh ex-girlfriend of mine from junior high junior high no high school sorry high okay. school uh actually reached out to me and said hey my husband's podcasting you want to join i'm like sure what's uh a, fun fact about them podcasting? they're yeah fun, fun fact about them they're now divorced um of course and right. she is now dating a pastor. Very is that, odd. Is that a name that I would know or not a name we're sharing? Sure nope. You would have never heard about that person. Oh, but, you know, it's funny like thing. I know, I know you knew Michelle Jesperson and I haven't heard from her in a while, but I don't think she got a divorce. That would be crazy. No, we, ne we never dated. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah Michelle and I never dated. We were just really, really good friends. But yeah, so I found out about podcasting, how it was done, how you 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 know a flow that's how the word flow got brought up because they used a flow they said hey right. use a flow about how what you're going to talk about and and kind of get you a schedule of events i'm like cool cool i said hey charlie uh well we first started our facebook group yeah the facebook um, group we started that in 2013 if i'm not mistaken yeah so i don't know yep. the timing of those two things was close uh, I, I don't remember. Maybe. But yeah. Maybe yeah. about like eight you, months later or something you, like that. Yeah, yeah. You were on that show for a bit and it, it kind of petered out or they, did mm -hmm. they break up or they said, hey, Todd, we don't need you anymore. Uh, they said, hey, we're going different directions. So that's kind of like Ooh, your dear, dear, that, dear Todd fantastic. letter. So I like that's so I took yeah. that and then I noticed that they only lasted like 10 more episodes and they 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 wow. dissolved because. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that was it was meant the, to be. You were the glue. Um. So, yeah, we started doing this. Our first episode is not published anywhere uh, because I think when we, is it either with our current hosting or something? Cause I know we had to, we had to upload cause we started using our current service back. We did pod bean yeah. pod -o -matic. Uh, right. We did the internet archive. <laughs> oh, I don't even, <laughs> which I think that. it's there. I think it's there. I'll okay. look it up. I mean, I know it, it lives on a hard drive somewhere. And when we did, when we ran episode 300, I think we republished the first one just for a giggle. Um, I wouldn't be opposed yep. to it. If you could dig that up and drop that on the network feed, I think that would be fun. Oh, my, my God. I think people would use it as blackmail against this channel. Oh, you think it'd show up in court? I'm just saying I'm advocating <laughs> it uh, <laughs> in the uh, civil uh, civil defamation suit. You think so? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we started rolling. It was us, and we've had a huge number of guests, uh, including family members. Was my brother on at one point? I know Louie was on. He's my best friend from high school. 
I don't think your brother ever came yeah. on. So, yes. Anyway, we got more reminiscing to do in a moment here. But we always got to remember uh, that we kick the show off by talking about our great Patreon uh, Secret Friends Unite squad. If you visit patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite, you get uh, great access to all of our programs, early programs, ad-free programs, bonus programs, including uh, The Facts of Geek Life, which is a show that uh, I do. Todd joined me recently to talk about The Simpsons, which was totally awesome. You'll be hearing that very soon. Also, lots of great interviews and stuff like a, a couple that I have coming up this week. I'm pretty fired up about that. Uh, our great interview with Al Jean, speaking of The Simpsons, is now available available uh, for Patreons, uh, and that is kind of a do not miss, so you should jump on and get on that. On the besties level, uh, my friend Derek Trevelyan, the figure dude, uh, Francie, my wife's hairdresser, uh, Xbox expansion pass, Mr. Luke Lore, my Uncle Tim, super great dude, uh, John Sedorf, uh, the Phoenix Sisters Entertainment, uh, Kelly and Crayley. I just did a podcast with Kelly uh, the other night where I dominated in Marvel trivia. Loved it. Ooh. Uh, Brendan Myers, uh, Corey in HD, Matthew Keel, and a brand new ad. Uh, one of the finest friends of our program, the guy who's been responsible for helping us craft a lot of great interview content. Uh, Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Krug, he always reminds me it's Krug like, uh, Krug, like Christopher Lloyd's character in Star Trek Three, who was the villain, was Commander Krug, uh, with an E. Uh, so yes, it's Kurt Krug. No, you had it spelled the right way. That's that's the way. It's I'm just making it uh, uh, easy for good. me to pronounce it, Charlie. Very good. No one and, will know the difference. And since Todd drives me nuts because he always does that, he 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 reverse capitalizes things. So thanks for that. He does it because it makes me mad. But. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, since it's just the two of us, one of the great perks of becoming a Patreon is we give you a superpower. So I'll go first since I know uh, uh, Kurt a little bit better. Kurt was at Michigan State at the same time as me in the journalism school at the same time as me, but I don't believe we ever met until many years later on the con circuit somehow. And that's how we became friends. So Kurt, you are a superstar journalist. Uh, you have interviewed more famous people than I could even possibly guess. So I'm going to say your superpower is to have the snap of your finger, have all of your emails returned by everybody's press agent to get those great interviews set up and to have them subsequently let you quit your day job so you can be freelance geek reporter to the stars. That's, that's your superpower. All right. So he has instant confirmation of emails and uh, quality connections. That's amazing. Charlie, I'm going to go a little more prop, a little more practical, I guess, because you need a good Internet signal to allow those things to happen. I'm going to say Kurt always has four bars on his Wi-Fi signal. That's his uh, superpower. And you know what? Uh, maybe I'll be able like like scoff at that. But man, oh man, everybody needs four bars. It's, so you Kurt, know, you've got four bars, man. The, the internet is a utility and uh, a uh, a smartphone is uh, like not, to not have that is not have toilet paper, kind of literally. Four <laughs> bars, that's his, that's his internet, that's his superhero four name, four bars. bars. All right, yep. well, we're going to go through this kind of quickly, uh, but we do have a f list of Todd... Uh, went through this i don't want to take away any of the glory of his putting it together but we did put together a verbal uh favorite moments reel going back 500 episodes uh to again to september of 2014 of all the people who have been with us along the way todd take it away so charlie i would hate to say that our secret friends unite like database is a little bit wonky it is unfortunately. So there were certain things I could not find, some things I could. So I did my best to come back with like some highlights from the Secret Friends Unite history of the last 500 episodes. So it was amazing. So when we started the show, it was just you and me. We have ventured forth with certain guests. So we looked, talked, I, I was thinking, who are our awesome collaborators, the people that have like really been a part of this show more than just one episode or as just as a guest. So I thought about this. So Chris Kubiak, Kiku, man, the dude is well doing well. He's got kids now. His life has changed, but he made our theme song. So if I you know. hear that, it's awesome. It's amazing. We I still use it. it to this day. I it's know. been fun. It used your voice sampling. It's a good time. Um, Lisa Goodman, my goodness. I don't know how we met Lisa. 
out of the wilds. No you know, she was part of our show for many, many years and was a co-host for some time. And, um, you know, we had a great time with Lisa. So thank you, Lisa, for being part of our show, adding a little, uh, you know, feminine wiles to our show when we needed it. So we thank you, Lisa, did. so much for that. Um, our art, Charlie, uh, we, we, we struggled with our art for a long time. Adam Leonard, a local from uh, Minneapolis, uh, along with myself, he has uh, helped us with our art down the years through uh, SFU to co-op mode, through all the different things we've done, through all of our iterations. So thank you, Adam. And he's also doing some art for us as part of a, uh, a donation for Extra Life for waiver wire wizard so oh, wow. check out for that that's coming there awesome. so thank you adam uh we want to have you on the show again uh charlie bobby balls um was a huge fan of ours big friend of ours he's you know was along our journey of podcasting um he passed away in 2021 from covid but he was our dc super fan charlie yeah we miss bobby big time big time Absolutely. Uh, then our one of our biggest supporters, you know, if you want to put something out on their inter- inter- webs and you want to have somebody uh, uh, got your back, it's Corey Derrick Hudson from the um, uh, the Boss Rush Podcast Network. Corey's always there. He's always saying, I love these guys. We've had him on our show. We've had many people from his podcast on our show. So, Corey, thank you so much for being our supporter. And Charlie, lastly and uh, firstly, it's our wives no because yeah. uh, they allow us to have how many hours a week right. to dedicate us to do this goofy world thing we do. Without a doubt. And uh, unwaveringly supportive. So April on my side, Chris on your side. Very grateful. Thank you for supporting our dream. <laughs> I guess. Of Absolutely. Course. But it's, yep. it's and- a passion. Yeah, and April has been part of your podcasting, yeah. and I'm going to have Chris on an episode of Spotlight to talk about the world of you know writing, which wow. is cool, um, which will be fun. Yeah, so uh, we want to bring them along for the ride, and obviously Mark, who's part of, and that that that's kind of brings us into five years later. We brought in Mark. Mark has been a huge part of our show. He does a show with you. He does a show with me and his wife Loren, and he's got a son. Yeah. Uh, they make it happen right. as well. Crazy, wild stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, what do we got next? We we have we had some some kind of our supporting stats. Cast of characters. Stats. stats, Charlie. Stats. Yeah, I looked at it. this. I had to look at our our guide because I couldn't. We we basically weren't keeping track of anything pre three hundred. Right. So I started at three hundred. Basically, guest appearances. So we had Kay Quinn. Starting in twenty twenty one, she had twelve appearances. She was right. part of Code Forty Seven. Uh, she's not really. Part of our team today because she just life finds a way but thank you Kay, for being part of all of our stuff uh, we appreciate it um and good luck in your endeavors chris john came on 2021 as well i reached out to him charlie like hey i see you do a cool show you want to be on our co-op mode he says yes and then i thought he's a good guy he could should come on sfu he's been on six episodes since then wow. really a good guy most deaf yeah, Joseph Moran, Mr. Bad Bit. Uh, he's kind of a Marvel uh, Spider-Man guy. Uh, pre-300, couldn't figure out what he's been on, but post-300, four episodes, he's been great. And then yeah. lastly, Luke Lore, Mr. XCP. He has been amazing. He loves Star Trek. He loves DC. He loves video games. He loves anything geek. Has been on four episodes as well. So if you oh, want to... Yeah. Be always part of this, to, yeah. Always trying to get him rogue back. crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Join us because we want to have new voices, new faces. All the time. Because I, I, you know, pre two hundred, you know, pre three hundred, they weren't really part of our our, our right. wheelhouse. So thank you so much for being part of that. So Charlie, another data stat video. Oh, this is so goodness. much fun. You, if you look at our our YouTube channels now, you will see that our first episode on YouTube was episode three one hundred and two. That's so in funny. 2017 that could have been 100, but I guess we waited. That's so weird. It was, we were trying to figure it all out. We were struggling at times. You might have seen Charlie in his bed podcasting back in the day on YouTube, but we had our Logan spoiler cast with Lisa Goodman, which you just talked about. Lisa was a great host. She's a Michigander. Uh, but we had Ray Causey, who is like a deep cut. He is my friend, Michelle Jesperson's 
nephew by marriage. And he is now a ghost hunter doing out his thing in the where in, in Georgia. Right. Man, Ray, I hope you're doing well, man. But it's there, Charlie. If you want to check our YouTube channel, you have to look yeah. deep and dark. It's you won't know that it's a video yeah. until you click on it. Yeah, because we did a lot of like YouTube with it was like our 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 podcast with our logo, but no video. Which so very what, weird. Which is weird because podcast or uh, uh, YouTube uh, pushes our audio to a so every episode has two homes. One of yes. which is just the logo with the audio. So YouTube music. Yeah, YouTube music. Yeah, listen to us that way. Yeah. Listen to us yeah. that way. Uh, All right. So, so interview interviews has been a huge yeah. part uh, of what we've done. Um, and now it's an ongoing segment that we publish uh, Patreon first, but then it does find its way to the free feed. Uh, Todd, you've talked to an author you love, Raymond E. Feist. Uh, I think Beast, yeah, Beast, yeah, going back quite a ways. It he, was a hijinks, yeah. Charlie. He's my favorite author in all the world. Worlds, my he's my favorite author for my my series. We did a video podcast, but my internet crapped out. So so funny. So it's out there, but I want to republish that. Peter David, I I met him at Comic Con in the Twin Cities. Got to do that. He's obviously in bad health now, but I'd like to republish that. And then from there, you've had a lot of great experiences as well. Yeah, uh, we, we did have Al Jean from The Simpsons, uh, showrunner, going back almost to the beginning of that program. Uh, Ron Friends, I think he was tech. Yeah, we did. That was one of the very first interviews we really did. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, yeah, and uh, Nicholas Meyer, uh, great Star Trek director and writer and novelist of Sherlock Holmes novels. That was fairly recently. The Uncanny Experience was a gentleman who then turned around uh, and was a guest during the summer when we were talking about X-Men films. And yeah, they were show. just at TC Comic-Con. I went to their event. Those yeah. gents are great and hopefully they'll all have them on again for right. a new experience so thank you for that because that was a recent one absolutely we talked to doug jones who's a great guy he's wonderful in person and he'll he'll talk to literally everyone in april and i've spent some time with him on the the cruises and again our spotlight is an ongoing deal so you will hear more i'm recording two this week uh don't want to say i want i want to maintain the surprise but again if you go to patreon.com slash secret friends unite you can join for free and listen uh to the majority of what we just described here but, but a lot of others as well so in january of last year 2023 we started a patreon it was something that for a long time we're like ah, we just you know there's a lot involved and blah 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 but to be honest with you it's given me a chance to do things creatively that I didn't know if I was ever get a chance to do, which is kind of talk about my passion uh, for genre TV, which I do on the show. Uh, Todd and I talking about a specific comic project. We got to get back on that. We've been off a little while. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, our spinner rack program. And again, it's uh, and, and then, you know, different mods and, and different perks that you get just listening to this program. So we've loved that. Yeah, we're about ready to hang two years on uh, the line doing that. Uh, and it's going strong. We have a small but quasi loyal following and we're very grateful for all those people so uh all right back to you yes so as i think about some of our core episodes and our milestones um i go back to uh looking back what we've done every like 100 episodes or so so once again our database is shaky it's kind of okay we don't have a wiki yet unfortunately no one's doing that for us so i have to do it through our uh flows which are still alive and well yes. and i look into it uh Ooh. some of the links don't even work anymore but there we go episode 107 charlie march 2017 lise was our co-host Spider-Man Homecoming trailers were happening. Oh. Crazy times. Rain Wilson was cast as Harry Mudd. In Star Trek Discovery, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. He should have been used more because yeah. he's amazing as Harry Mudd. Well, I mean, they could they still have an opportunity to bring him back, but yeah, we'll yes. see in Stranger Worlds. But not on Discovery. No, nope, Discovery, that, that ship has sailed. So uh exactly. episode 207 was in March of 2019. Uh, Marjorie was our guest. I I like Marjorie. She kind of moved up, moved up north and went off the grid, so I've not really tracked her down, but would love to have her back. Uh, Game of Thrones dropped. Was season eight the last last season? Uh, I think it was season nine, but okay. I, I I could not even tell you. But, it's yeah, so but, long ago, Charlie. Yeah, my brain yeah. is not working that it was a big, back. Uh, trailer drop and re reviewed uh, the first Captain Marvel film. Uh, because that was the last movie, last movie before Endgame. So that movie was a yeah. very, very big deal. All right, moving on. What do we got? 
Yeah, episode 309, we brought on, this is in 20, uh, January 2021, Chris Abbott was our guest. He's a great writer of the Sherlock Holmes genre, which is great. He's a friend of yours. And another uh, interview that I'm hoping to snag. I just got to reconnect with Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Yeah. We'd love to have Chris back. He was amazing. He's a, such yeah. a good guy. Uh, you know, he is a wonderful husband, and he's just living the life. Man, the, the dude loves tank tops. I don't know. He's I'm not. Tank- I'm not a huge Saint Top fan. And, and he know. lives in Dudes. New England. In New England, so that's uh, you know. So you, know. you can wear them like three months out of the year. Yeah, we're just like we're, we're Jake. Yeah, exactly. but we talked about Wandavision episode one, and then we talked about sequels that never happened. Charlie, one of my favorite things we do in the SFU is we do have like a weird like. Uh, uh, we have a Thunderdome, but it's about like more of a topic than it is yeah. a specific yeah. review. Right. So I like that. Totally. Yeah. Good conversation. Uh, yeah. Last one. Oh, episode 404, episode not found uh, from December of 2022. Uh, we had Kelly Gettner on. Kelly Gettner is not only a Patreon, uh, but she is a very frequent collaborator on our shows and vice versa. As I said, I was just on uh, her cosplay cafe on Friday night, <clears throat> which is a live program. You defended our honor, Shirley, I in did, Marvel I trivia. Did. In Mar- it was oh, MC- my goodness. MCU trivia. Uh, that was during the time we had our one and only ad sponsor. Uh, oh, that was which, awesome. For which we did not uh, keep their business, but we do still have their products. Because Manscaped, said, yeah. we want you back. We do. <laughs> Give us some love. <laughs> I am scaped. Give us because of you. We talked about the Last of Us trailer. I had no idea that this would become my favorite video game adaptation. Oh, absolutely. We've watched it uh, several times through. Uh, we did a Mount Rushmore of holiday characters. Those are always fun segments. Those uh, absolutely. Yeah. I love those weird one-offs. Absolutely. And Todd, the the memories by the Misty Moonlight, this one's all yours because they're talking about how much they love you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Charlie, uh, we will do that in a second. But do you have any specific like, I love that we did this or I'm glad we are doing this now? With oh, SFU. my God. Put me on the spot. I think. Well, absolutely. The, well, I think the original, you know, the original reason we started this is to think about people in your life going back that you lose track of move to a different city move to a different state todd and i get to see and talk to each other and every four to six months have a screaming argument about something while we're looking at each other and most people don't get most people don't get to do that because they don't have a regular fix well this is a business we're doing it sometimes sometimes i don't want to do it sometimes i'm sure you don't want to do it but you know the show must go on that's show business no matter to what caliber we do this this is our thing. This is what we do. So um, I, I'm grateful for the opportunity <clears throat> to be in, in, you know, in our, in our, each other's lives this way, but also that it's brought us in contact with, you know, our John, who uh, we might see later in the show. Don't know. Um, but, uh, and, and just a chance to have something to share with other people in the community that we reach. Um, so, yeah, I've just, I've been grateful for this opportunity and it's just something unique and fun. Um, that other people just don't ever really get the opportunity to to tackle. So it's pretty great. I think it's pretty great. What about you? Yeah, I mean, that's why we started the show is to stay in touch because staying in touch means more than just a uh, a tag, a, a thing like that. It's a we're connecting, we're talking about, we're building something, yep. and we are going through life and we're staying in touch. It's life. If we don't connect because, hey, this changed and we've changed a lot in the last 10 years. And that's absolutely true. So um, I'm glad we've been able to do that and because it's been a, because it's made us stronger despite the distance. And that's it. And we, you know, it, things change and life changes and you've been married three times now, Charlie, and you're in a better place than you have ever been. And that's amazing. Don't, don't give people my, my details. Now you can give my address. <laughs> exactly. But, but you're in a much better p- position oh because of it. You're, Perhaps, yeah. you, you've moved and you've done all these things and it's been great. And it's, it's a way for us to stay in touch along the way. We've also expanded our horizons about the cool people we meet. I mean, think about the Canardian who has become part of our life in the last five years. Someone you would never, because he lives so far away, someone that you would have never encountered or know that you encountered. uh, But through the digital community that exists... We, you know, we had some great people. We've had some less than great people that have come into our lives. Mark is at the top of the list of the great people because he's he's our partner. Yeah, absolutely. And I think of all the guests we met, and like I, I talked about the top top people, but mm-hmm. everybody there has made our podcast more interesting, better to go. And I think of all the cool things we've been able to do. The the fact that we've got a card we can show people. We do this, and yep. they say, "Oh, 
I can take you seriously is amazing. So Maybe. we've, you know, it, despite all of everything that changes, mm -hmm. we still make this podcast. We make a couple other podcasts and we have a good time. So that's our legacy. And it's amazing. And I think about all the friends we made along the way. And it's pretty right. awesome. Right. And when we hit it, it'll be another 10 years and we'll hit a thousand. And that's crazy. Assuming that. you know, Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So all can't right, wait well, to social for Social Security to kick in. Oh, uh, but before we do that, I needed to talk about two cool people that shared some memories with us. That's Luke Lore, obviously, Mr. XCP, our DC super fan. He says, I don't know that it's one distinct memory. But I know my heart is full when I see your name pop up in the chat. I can always count on Todd Oxford to be supportive of XCP, which is incredible. Then seeing you connect with the nerd chat and Project X Talk just makes me that much more happy. Proud to know and you and consider you a friend. So, Charlie, where that plays into is growing our connections. Yes. So, Luke, I brought him in. You're like, who is this dude? I'm like, he podcasts with Sean Capri, which we know as well. And it just mm -hmm. becomes a we grow our network, which is great. And then through Luke, I've met a lot of cool new people as well, which has grown our ranks as well. And that leads me into somebody I met through Luke, which is Chipotle Bear, which is part of the nerd chat who we had Chipotle Bear. We've had some other people on Daddy Diwali, which has grown our ranks, which is all about expanding and horror horizon. He said, my favorite memory is having the full gamut of our crew run through SFU podcasts. It's been a blast making new friends. Also, I absolutely loved the episode where you joined us at the nerd chat and I was raving about the loaded nachos just to find out that you were the one that was one of our pot products. So, yes. Cheap pop. I didn't know it was going to happen. Yep, that's the product I'm working on. So it's a <laughs> synergy, Charlie. Yes, yes. What Part of the SFU uh, life is knowing that I work at General Mills. And right. yes, I probably make something you love today or hate. Could be. Fair chance of the either. Uh, all right. Well, uh, that ends our retrospecticus. Um, but life would not be complete without talking about this week's cover. And this is wild. See, we have uh, gone in, uh, since we went over episode 400, we've gone back to the single digits of calling out a comic. But this time around, we were able to land on the authentic number of a comic. And it's one of the most iconic comic book characters uh, from one of the most questionable time periods of that yes. comic book character's background. We're talking about uh, the issue from October of 1993 of the core Batman title during the Nightfall uh, uh, storyline. Um, again, this is issue 500 of the core Batman title where uh, we were introduced, I believe introduced to the character of Bane. I don't know if he was around before the storyline. I'm not sure. Oh, very far in advance of this. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. I didn't know if he was a new character at that time, but he was the one who grabbed Batman, Bruce Wayne. Broke his back. back. Uh, but he had to go on hiatus and this other dude named Azazel uh, as Azra. Uh, Jean Paul Valley, who is part of a weird cult group. The, yes. Took over yeah. the mantle of the Took bat. Took over the mantle. He had a very 90s outfit. Uh, and what you see on the cover of this is him uh, having beat up Bane, holding him by his uh, stretchy Mexican wrestler unitard, uh, draped over the ground, and about so to deliver, yeah, deliver a killing blow while some bats kind of fly by apropos of nothing at all. And they're in the mount. Oh, they're in the bat cave. See, I see the little slag tights in the background. Um yeah, there's there's not much about this image that could couldn't be more '90s, um, which is great because that's us. We're very '90s because we're we're a product of that time period. So this is uh, absolutely this is very fitting. I like it very much. So yeah, I a was a uh, freshman at Michigan State. This yeah. issue came out. This was a, like the last issue of Nightfall, which came into Night Quest, which was Batman was essentially taken down by Bane, and then this John Paul Valley guy took over, and he started off as normal batman but he started adding like all these weird like i'm gonna add in a helmet and gauntlets and weird things to become uber extreme so and extreme all of the bad guys that took down batman and that's where we landed and there was two covers we had this cover by kelly jones who was very iconic with his lots of muscle guys wow. we also had a joe casada cover which was actually like chromium right Part and go from there and yeah this was essentially like a huge milestone big wow. deal into like how will bruce wayne come back 
and how will he take over for this guy? It's a little bit too extreme. So uh, cool. Oh, extreme. And it was really interesting at the time that DC was just doing some crazy stuff. Batman's dead uh, or Superman's dead. And then Batman is being replaced. Unbelievable. I mean, My yeah. goodness. Well, even after 500 episodes, nearly 500 episodes, there is no replacement for our senior news correspondent. I am, as always, talking about Madam Webb, uh, who at 124 years young is down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine out there in Hollywood, California, waiting for us with the latest news and scoops. Let's go check it out. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Oh, my goodness, Madam Webb. As we look forward to the holiday, um, you were once a sponsor to a cool turkey uh, conglomerate. You were uh, the Turkey Tom uh, gal at the time, and you're all dressed up in feathers and, 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 and giblets, and you were all about that turkey life. They tore it away from you in 19... 19- 27 and you have been anti-turkey ever since so enjoy your pork uh bird for thanksgiving and you say my segues are a little out of control <laughs> i try to do it charlie i'm trying to build into the the connection the connection as we the say connection the the, the, yeah. the connection well speaking of uh of a company that loves connections uh marvel is talking about details of for the eyes of wakanda this is an animated program uh that we've known about for some time uh there was a sizzle reel from d23 in brazil that we talked about last week uh that did give us a little bit of taste of this uh i know black panther is a favorite of your sons in particular like it was his favorite marvel film so this is obviously Mm -hmm. very big uh in in your house um is this something that draws him in is he into the like the tv stuff for the marvel properties he likes or i know you say he's not a big movie guy but what about the tv stuff is that he has zero interest in this oh there you go and unless you said uh they are going to do something really cool in regards to the music or the influence yeah he doesn't care about a prequel about the life or the legacy of uh, black panther just just like his dad doesn't care for prequels well i can find value in this i don't know if i find value in the the way disney has paired up the future of Black Panther with yeah. uh, Shuri leading it because right. Shuri for me was a character I found as a cool like side character, like not as the lead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so like the with her, I'm that, like, right. I'm like, yeah, she's okay. Just doesn't yeah. give me the confidence. It has nothing to do with her as a person or character, but it's like saying, is she the best bearer of that? mantle that makes me excited for it i would say no yeah i would rather have it be his wife the person that was really cool and a much better actress exactly i can't disagree um the good news is is that while this is a prequel uh it will only be four episodes hopefully of 30 minutes um so you won't have to suffer long but yeah it is a prequel as you can certainly tell from the sizzle reel uh, basically going through the history of Wakanda as a place um, and historical events that have, have taken place in that. So it does seem very inside baseball for your hardest, hardest of core fans of, of, uh, of the Black Panther series. I, yeah, I can't say that, you know, because you and I watch everything anyway, that's, that's the job. Um, but I can't say this would be a hotly anticipated uh, project, you know, uh, uh, project of mine that's coming out. Um, oh, you know, it's out at the end of next summer. I was thinking it was more next fall. It says August 6th. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, lodged between your friendly neighborhood Spider Man, which comes out uh, in less than two months on January 29th, and Marvel Zombies, which comes out during spooky season on October 3rd. So, um, yeah. you know, t- Todd, if you were just a Black Panther fan, you, you know what, your son's the greatest example. Would you have any? any vibe for this would this mean anything to you that's a hard that's a hard sell because are people huge black panther fans that want to look back i don't know there hasn't been like a series like this has been the saying hey if you're in the mcu do you want to look back at like something from the past like a tony stark what was his teenager or what was tony stark's dad like well, there's I, been which options. they did 
Which they did, yeah. Which they have, but he was part of something, but it wasn't focused on just Tony Stark's dad. It was he was part of agents, you know, it, the, you know, Agent Carter and things like right. that. He's been part of like uh, Captain America. So that's the weird part. It's like, do we do people care about this heritage of this country? I don't know. Uh, it has to really show off. And maybe if there's some things that are really cool. But it feels like this is more like a Star Wars Visions than yeah. a must see TV. It's it's kind of a book of Boba Fett vibe, which, yeah, you know, I, I do a Star Wars show. And definitely uh, there were parts of the book of Boba Fett that were kind of cool. But it, it boiled down to a lot of the ways you and I felt felt similarly about the Star Wars prequels is that there were great moments. But as a story didn't really come together so yeah that that's my fear here as well obviously you know come august of next year you'll be hearing us talk about this but uh yeah for now i can't say that it's the it's the most exciting thing on my radar so um but we will find out as we always yeah. do so well todd not to steal a catchphrase from another podcast but in delays and dismays we have star wars movie news what do we got this is a weird one because we did get knowledge about a new uh, sequel trilogy coming, but then we've heard sequel, about a sequel, Disney sequel trilogy. Yes, sequel like a sequel sequel. Ah, yeah, that's the problem. It's like the like pizza, the like four, pizza, pizza? the fourth the fourth trilogy within Star Wars. Right, where yeah. it sits, we don't know. The fourth trilogy, we'll call it that way. Um. We are hearing about though that a movie is being pulled out of 2026 from Star Wars, but it's like they have these like no names, so it's like, oh, what's going to happen? I don't know. And then you know, you put something out on our Discord, and Mark's like, hey, actually, and I'm like, yeah. why are we even in this position where we have to track what? disney is doing so we can actually be up to speed i'm like if there's going to be a ray solo project but now she's part of this it seems like why is disney not well uh, well aware of this why is this happening and why do we care should we even be commenting i don't know it's frustrating as being a star wars fan that you feel like our movies are just solid enough as a release schedule and if the ice age movie kicks us out that's the scary part does ice right. age have more cachet than a star wars film well, maybe it does i, I don't mean, know they either think it does or it's maybe they've lost the faith in star wars as well i guess you would really have to go back and look at how the last ice age movie did i mean obviously enough to invest you know five years and tens of millions of dollars in making an animated film because it's very costly and so it's a long process so they're not going out there to make something that they think is going to flop because if an animated film really tanks they're not necessarily coming back and 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 going to a well again. i mean ray romano is a sizzling God, star charlie, ages. you don't piss off ray romano charlie i mean like yeah. Anybody in Star Wars, could they even take on Ray Romano? I don't know. Yeah, not. But, um, you know, the thing is, say what you will, uh, lumping the uh, Star Wars sequel trilogy together because, you know, we all have feelings about it. I, I haven't talked to many people who think that it ended great and they absolutely love it. But those films made a ton of money. Um, and it, uh, one thing I know about Disney as a corporation, Disney like money. Uh, so they're looking for more money. Um, so there's no, there, there's not a lot of doubt to me that this is going to get made, but it is very frustrating that they just can't settle on. And we know that the Mando and Grogu movie is being made. It's, it's in production. I think it wrapped production or it's close to it. So it's, it's actually happening. It's, it would seem unlikely that they would move that date, which is for a summer of 26 movie, which is, um, a while since, uh, Star Wars has been in that spot because the the sequel films came out at the end of the year. So this is moving Star Wars back to the summer time frame for the first time since uh, I think. So. Oh, they put Solo out. I guess you know I don't really think of those. They put Solo out in the summer of 2018, which a lot of people have clearly forgotten about. So th this is just frustrating to me. You know what I mean? But yeah, to see Star Wars get booted, I don't know. It's because of Ice Age, or if it's just that they can't get their act together. It's the second part of it that frustrates me more to me. 
it's not a great environment to be a, a creative director to say my project, which would be whatever, is now going to be at the whim of whatever else Disney has in, like in their over our art between Marvel, their animated stuff, Pixar. And now this happens. I'm like, and then, hey, we're going to move the Ray film to be whatever. And then now you need to make yeah, a scene. I'm like, how is that even like a great creative environment to be in to say, well, if we move up the Ray film, now you have to incorporate where Ray is in your trilogy film. And I'm like, that seems so weird and odd yeah. and unfulfilling yeah. as a creative director to say, well, is Ray going to be in what place when I use Ray in my film? So right. does it make sense to say putting Ray in your films? If Ray is going to be used differentially, that could impact my story. Right. I don't know if I want to sign up for that. If I'm a creative entity. Yeah. Right. But again, you know, people like jobs. So somebody will do it. Um, I do. Yeah. I do know yeah. people like jobs, Charlie. Yeah. Yes. I know. Yes. That's something I struggle yeah. with myself uh, from time to time. But uh, somebody will take on the job. But to your point, what if they just get who they can get? And it's not somebody that they could get who would be a greater talent if they didn't play these games. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough. What, that that's is very tough. Thing. So it's a question for the ages. We will We will find out. As time goes by, and as you know, we'll be here to talk about it. So Ray deserves uh, Ray deserves a good movie without like the weight of like uh, I didn't like the third film or wake to, right. and like I just went Ray, Ray to have a good film where she, Ray's doing a great right. uh, ener uh, energetic uh, outing, and it doesn't matter about woke or. Right. all the weird decisions that were made in the other movie series different writers and different directing models and stuff just get a it's frustrating get, get a get a solid story you can tell over three movies all right well this next one is for you here is a what what a weird thing this is so even to read this even <laughs> yes. to read this headline this is now our third version of the laura craft character uh sophie turner who uh, the yes. world got to know through Game of Thrones is set to be Laura Croft. And uh, this I didn't realize in Phoebe Waller Bridges Amazon series. So basically, yes. Lando, Lando's robot slash flea bag is doing a yes. Laura Croft series. And Indiana Jones's, Indiana uh, Jones's niece adopted niece. Yes. They're yes. Niece Absolutely. by association. <laughs> Charlie, why are you confused by all of those things said together and it? just is out in your ear holes that's a that's a bunch of words that are in my ear holes yes exactly so anyway <laughs> it's, uh, it's synergy that's why charlie yes we are getting uh sophie turner apparently in the lead to be cast as the next laura croft tomb raider which we've had let's see we had uh, angelina. uh what's her name angelina, angelina the first then we and had then alicia, uh, alicia van kander and then we have also now will get a new lead, but we've had even more iterations within the video game franchise right, of that's, that's essentially a female okay. Indiana Jones Tomb Raider. There's somebody that goes out, explores and get artifacts and has guns and does things with bad people. That's Where's kind of like the whole concept. Where's a tank top? That's what's important. Yeah. And in so, the original video game version, it had a cone bra, apparently. Exactly. <laughs> very, very small amount of pixels that had to do a lot of the storytelling, which was right. that that Laura's going to be out there in a very pixely bra shooting Tyrannosaurus Rexes. That's how it works, Charlie. Video games. Uh, like John Levitz would say, acting. And there you go. But yeah, Sophie Turner getting this role beyond like the hair. Uh, her Game of Thrones background is being kind of like a more of a uh, reticent host, uh, reticent like lead. I don't know if she's a great pick. I've not seen her do anything like spelunking, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, shooting Tyrannosaurus Rexes or was, spelunking, yeah. Charlie. It just was not physical acting. And I no. don't know, a, you know, my my uh, my only really Game of Thrones recollection of work that she's done since that time or in her first with that time was being in those X-Men films, which I did not find her remarkable as Jean Grey. No. Even though she was the 
she was the subject of the third film, which would give her a time to shine. So the question is, well, okay, it's not a question. It was a terrible film. Is that why I, I have that stain of thinking that she's not great on top of it? You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. she, she's not an, a, an actor that excites me um, based on the fact that, yes, you're absolutely right. She did uh, obviously classically trained, was in a very important series uh, and, and performed admirably within it. But yes, not a, not a, a leading lady, as it were, or someone really known for physical acting. Um, didn't, didn't really blow me away. So yeah, I, I don't know, but I mean, lessening the blow, just like we've talked about in the past, perhaps this is Amazon looking to finally land the thing that will give them an edge in the streaming wars, the streaming race. I don't know that I really kind of think that this is it. Yeah. A franchise that has not exactly, uh, captured the hearts of many people. Even the video games are kind of like in a spot where it's not very solid. Um, yeah, this just seems like a miss. I feel like this will be a fart in the wind and no one will care and we'll move on because Amazon has too much money to actually keep up with something and we go from there. But Charlie, Wait. I would say yes. something that is interesting is a, yeah. is a classic movie that has really influenced everything that is Forbidden Planet. The, you know, the giant robot or not the giant robot, the robot that was part of uh, Lost Lost right. uh, Lost Robbie, in Space. Lost, I always thought it was called Robbie the Robot. But when we were talking Lost in Space, myself and Jonathan Snedeker on, on our Patreon on the Facts Geek Life, he said that it, it did not have that name, perhaps just early on because we just talked about the first season. Oh, so. Sure. I'm more I'm of a nickname, sure. I guess. Yeah. 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 So but, for uh, Robot from Lost in Space, Forbidden Planet was a 1956 classic sci-fi film with Leslie Nielsen from you think of oh like, oh, he is a goofy actor, but he was the sci-fi lead for this film. And it really was one of the first big sci-fi films and right. had really influenced a lot of creators from that. They're looking to reboot it uh, with uh, a writer who is one of my favorites. Brian K. Vaughn was behind oh, um, Saga. Saga. He was also behind yeah. Why the Last Man. Uh, he's also been behind Ex Machina, a few other projects as well that I absolutely love. Uh, Paper Girls, Saga, blah, blah, blah. And he was also a writer on Lost and Under the Dome, which Charlie, wow, La Under the Dome. That wasn't that one like CBS streaming's like first big we projects. No, no, no. That was net. That was, that was, I think that was, it was a streamer, but it wasn't CBS. We, we really enjoyed that. Now you're going to have to make me look it up. We, we did really enjoy I'm going to look it, it up. A, it's one of Stephen King's later works. And yeah, we liked it. Uh, and it had the launched on from, CBS, Charlie well, launched on CBS. Know, I, on, on the streamer or CB? Oh, okay. So in twenty seven. Well, this was 2013. I, I don't even know what would have no, no. CBS would have done. No, they live. They launched in, yeah, on the networks that launched, that launched in uh cbs launched in 2017 that would be one of the first shows that april and i watched together because we we started dating in 2013 okay so okay um, there you interesting. go and yeah it had uh the character of big jim was played by uh the dude from uh, breaking bad uh that who was the yeah who was into uh geodes who yes Basically, it was almost killed many times. Yeah, yeah. So Brian K. Vaughn doing this is kind of cool. And the fact that this could be really unique, that it would deliver on kind of the premise of that show. Uh, Emma Watts is aboard to produce, was behind iRobot, Alita, Battle oh. Angel, and that we may have James Cameron involved in this as well so charlie this could be more along lines of just saying hey this thing exists and it was an influential or right. is this going to be like a uh, a movie plus a tv series plus all these things i don't know but why not right. absolutely uh you know again the, uh, hollywood is always looking and it's funny because it's being that it's 70 years old or pushing that it's it's it almost becomes yeah. original ip because who in the hell went to go see this, you know, in the theaters, our parents, I mean, my dad was, was even watched it 39, you know, so he might've yeah. seen this in the neighborhood theater back in Detroit. I have no idea. Probably not. Um, but I yeah, don't know. I've yeah. never seen it. Yeah. So very few people that are kind of alive and kicking uh, are, have seen this. So it will, it you know, it'll potentially feel new. So this is uh, for a 
major motion picture, I assume, or is this for a streamer? I'm trying to skim the notes. And, that would be a film that might turn into something more later on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I'm all for it. Cause again, it feels like, you know, an original IP. Um, and you know, even though it's not, so there's a lot of people who would see it and probably not even really realize that it's something from so long ago. So that's not, yeah, you know, it'd be like if they, if they brought back something that, you know, was public domain that no one has ever touched upon, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, that though, it seems maybe this is like the last my, uh, my, my college films. Yes. Todd student films. Todd, yes. I, 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 Todd robot. So, all right, well, let's wrap exactly. it up with a story about possibly the greatest man who's ever lived. Uh, yes. who got his start on both the Simpsons and Saturday night live. Uh, Conan O'Brien, Todd, your personal hero. What, what's he got going on? Yes. So this is really cool because he was selected as the host of the 97th annual Academy Awards, AKA the Oscars in March 2025. So the Oscars have struggled to find a host after the craziness of Will Smith coming on board and so slapping Chris Rock. But Conan O'Brien is amazing and he is hilarious. He started his show started my freshman year of high school, uh, college in right. 1993. I have watched Conan from the beginning to the end. Uh, I've seen Triumph, the Insult Comic Dog. I've seen Pimpot 5000. I've seen uh, what Leap Year Thomas. Uh, I think oh, was his name. You're thinking of Leap Day William. That was from 30 Rock. But I think it might have been part of that Ooh, as well on Conan it. O'Brien as well. Yes. So we've seen Conan O'Brien really influence comedy and the fact that he's going to come in and he don't give it enough because he's doing a YouTube like Conan needs friends podcast. He's making a lot of money. He don't need anything. Right. And he's just going to have a great time. He is amazing. His interviews have been fantastic. I listened to him on his podcast and also Sirius XM. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah, so excited for him to make fun of. Show. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited for him to make fun of Hollywood and just have a great time. And I don't know if he'll who will slap Conan. You, you, no took, one you does. took the words right out of my mouth. Who would who would get up and slap Conan? Does he have any enemies? Um, I think it might be like um would it be Mac Will <laughs> I think it might be Will um uh Arnett. what's his name from uh Will Arnett. But it'd be more like like just as a joke Somebody, versus like actually really hate because yeah. cool. Who hates Conan? I really? know it's like hating Mother Teresa, but you know, you know, somebody must, yeah. somebody must. Yeah. So, all right, well, uh, that wraps up uh, the news, and because we have, uh, we've had this retrospective, and we have another uh, great section coming up at the end of the show. We are skipping the Geek Easy this week. Uh, Todd, knowing our luck, we'll come back next week, and that'll be the week it burns down, and we'll have yes. to find something else. So yes. uh, we're taking a pause. I'm currently sitting in the Geek Easy, Charlie. Oh I said God. I'm going to podcast this week, so Todd, please wait, don't wait. curse it until I, I see, leave. I see smoke coming out of the kitchen. You got to run. No. Oh, I'm run. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're, but uh, while I'm uh, out of there, I, I do have my phone up. I've got the Air Qantas uh, app available. I'm booking us a uh, first class business class flight down to land down under where hologram Tina is waiting for us with the mutants and possibly a special guest to talk about our media predictions for 2034, 10 years in the future. Let's go. Hey, secret friends unite. Let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? 
Suncaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome! Thank you, Tina. Hologram Tina, excuse me, uh, RIP. Uh, we are down here uh, in the land down under in the Thunderdome. Uh, the mutants have assembled to list us, uh, listen to us talk about a great topic. And uh, we're looking, looking way ahead to the future. Todd, what are we talking about? My goodness, yeah, with 500 episodes in, 10 years behind us, we started in 2014, we're now at the year 2024. We thought, hey, we're at 2024. What does 2034 look like in 10 years? It's been crazy. My wife and I were talking about this like in 2014. Did we even have a streaming? We don't even remember where we were. We know where we're at now. So I thought, what would the world of geek media be like in 2034? We're talking 10 years from now. You know, uh, some of the things I talked about, you know, would we have ever guessed that Disney would have bought Hulu? Would we have ever guessed that Marvel would be in a slump after being on fire. Would we have guessed that Discovery would have bought Warner Brothers and James Gunn is now running DC? Would we have guessed that Amazon is making like huge blockbusters? All these things we didn't know, but here we are. So with that, I put in some thought starters, and by all means, this is open to anyone thinking about where we're going to be. I said, Will Marvel and DC still be relevant relevant in 2034? Will Star what? Wars movies be thriving? Oh, let's not forget. Oh, yes. We have a guest. Hello. Uh, we did decide to bring in, uh, you know, combining the three, uh, the three chambers of the triangle here, the other original secret friend, my college roommate from back in 1996, who was there witnessing the scrolling of our, uh, our secret friend brand upon the virginal wood of the, uh, the not the bunk beds, the loft that we had in our room at Holden Hall uh, and lifetime friend to Todd and myself. John, Jonathan's here, AKA Johnny Rose, here on the pod with us. John, good afternoon. Hello Evening. guys. Yes, Whatever the yes. Hell's going on. You're referencing the old uh, secret friends, Dead Sea Scrolls there in Holden Hall, you know, etched into <laughs> it's, the, it's funny. the loft. <laughs> Uh, I, I forgot because I, I thought, oh, 95, that was fall 95. You guys kicked out your old roommates and joined uh, into your own marital bliss in 96. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure that that's, I think in, uh, I'm trying to remember, John, we were in the same hall yep. that freshman year, but we didn't know each other. And then uh, the, in the, that fall, I had a couple of really lousy roommates uh, ended up breaking breaking it off the last suit or he left and then you were assigned a, or you were looking for a roommate and um, I was available my or... roommate my roommate and I were uh, we knew each other from back you know my hometown so we thought it'd be cool to room together and we learned pretty quickly Never. we were not very compatible <laughs> right um, <laughs> and I remember talking to you at the front desk you used to man there at Holden Hall oh, a few nights it. and yep. we were talking yep. and said you know what you're looking for a roommate I want out of my room so I think what I, I left floor one and went up to what floor five three three, three? Yeah, were, were we on three thirty we three or whatever <laughs> yeah I was I was on five one year three on the other and now I don't remember which was yeah one. so and then that's when I was introduced to to Todd and us uh, Steve, Steve and, and some people across the hall yep. and yep. some of their cohorts that lived across campus and. Uh, what was it? Hubbard, I think it was. <laughs> Hubbard uh, Hall was the the, in, the instigator of all this. The United Towers blackness, 12 floors of fun. <laughs> That's how say, we lived. I wasn't going to drop we rolled. Uh, Yeah. Then I moved to, to Holden to be Steve's. Steve was the RA on the floor. Right. I was sweet mate. And fun fact, we both got keyed in our dorms. Yes, I was just thinking about that. It was a lot of fun. It was the pennies. Some of the guy put the penny in yeah. your lock. Yeah, penny in our dorms, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but that's I met Steve because he and I were both at the hall like two weeks prior to it opening up and the only guys on the floor. And so that's how we became friends and then met Todd and Todd and I obviously our romance began to blossom that fall. (laughs) And that's why we're here now. And then John came along four or five months later and then here we all are now. Yeah, and I believe the result, I I think I was the first person punched in the history of recording uh, Melrose Place because of that. Yes, that was a a capital crime. Uh. It was, it was, absolutely. And if you want to know more about the Star Trek Next Generation uh, adult uh, adult, uh, fan fiction, it's out there. John has created that for Charlie. Oh, my God. I will never forget the, the figures. and they, they were, they were Voy- Voyager Playmates figures that you guys arranged in all the sex positions with Jabba the Hutt and Slave Leia. That and do an orgy. does not yeah. sound like something we would have done. It's absolutely. No, no. We're, we're mature adults. Honest no. to God, I have photographs. It's, it no. is a yes, thing. Yes. It's I, I don't yes. remember that. I, I Well, actually, I do remember that. But <laughs> I, I, I remember... Uh, trying to figure out different concoctions of alcoholic drinks while we were watching, I think it was Clerks. Uh, oh yeah, I remember trying. I was to the I was milk. the buyer, I believe, because I turned twenty one first. Oh my god. The, uh, yes, oh, I I was the I was the uh, I contributed to the to miners. We made some yeah. screwdrivers. It was a bad idea. End red, of red history. Solo, red solo cup. I remember oh, just yeah, putting absolutely. something into milk and it instantly curdled and <laughs> bad idea. Like, Orange juice. Never I was a good never idea. Good at chemistry though. So right. I mean, yes. I, I, I learned quickly I belonged in criminal justice with the athletes, I guess, so yes. And now I'm <laughs> yes. yeah, now I'm sure they're they're making meth in the dorm rooms at MSU. Anyway. <laughs> Here we are. If you think about it, it's 29 years later. Uh, the, the three of us uh, have our origin story. But from that point, um, getting back to our uh, Thunderdome topic, what will be happening in Geek Media in 2034? Because I will tell you, back in 2015, 2016, we thought we were only getting Star Wars Force Awakened or for the Force Unleashed. What was it? Action figures. That's all we thought we were getting from Star Wars. So that brings me back to will Star Wars movies be thriving in 2034? Will there be new, a new king of streaming in 2034? Will DVDs and VHS come back like vinyl? And will the early 2000s nostalgia be huge? Right. So those are some of the topics I proposed. This is not the end all be all. There's others you thought like, hey, let's bring up this. Let's go from there. So should we just start with the first bullet point? Let's do it. I did. So, John, you're our guest. So will Marvel and DC still be relevant in 2034 oh absolutely um i don't know which uh media formats will be relevant whether it's the the movies tv shows the comic books etc i think um i feel like the tv shows for marvel and maybe dc too i'm not really sure i don't keep up with the dc tv very much but i i would think the tv shows won't be uh i think that they will kind of refocus it back to big screen and, you know, comics are its own different thing um, in my opinion, but I feel like they're working on course correction for Marvel. I kind of feel like maybe I I would put my money more on a second golden age of the MCU coming up more so than not being relevant. Um, But I, I wouldn't put a large wager down on that. Yeah, um, but I think the TV shows have lost steam, and I think they're just going to continue to lose steam. I think that it's just oversaturated. Um, so I'm going to go with TV shows won't be movies likely to still be being pumped out, probably in a good place. Um, and you know, you know me, comics are not my uh, forte, so I can't speak to that. So I don't, I have no idea what that looks like. But uh, and DC, I think, has a um, possibility. Um, they, they need to show me before, um, it's more, I I know they've got a lot of new stuff in the works. I'm more optimistic about this round than the last round, but, um, I think my, uh, my guess is Marvel will still be more relevant than DC. (laughs) Very cool. Yeah. I mean, we've had, uh, we've had like the, you know, the waves of, uh, DC was huge. Marvel came back and then DC has like a surprise hit goes away. Then they brought TV to the forefront with the CW. And then Marvel's like, Oh, here's 
the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Here's uh, Cloak and Dagger. Here's another show. It's like, oh, it's all, it's all on it, all of all of their duds. Yeah, exactly. It's on Freeform. Does Freeform even exist anymore? Yeah, Nobody well, knows. Well, yeah, the other shows too. Like Runaways was thrown on Hulu. And, uh, oh, right. yeah. Yeah, there's you, no... Do you remember that that show was even out? <laughs> you know, what's interesting about that is that DC has had success spreading around those television properties where Marvel has failed spreading it around the different properties that they still own. They own Hulu. They own... You know, they own Disney. Freeform? They own ABC. Yeah, they own Freeform. But none of those could really not even just coalesce, but be something that had consistent quality that it didn't matter that it didn't get, because I think the obsession with Marvel was finding things, making things connect where DC had, well, this is the flash. It connects with other shows that are on the CW, but it doesn't then lead you into a movie where that was the, one of the larger failures, I think of the Marvels, which was out almost exactly this time last year is that you had, I've mentioned this before that you had three lead characters, one of which was from the sequel, which had, or the, the, the prior film, totally different setting, very nostalgic, funny ha-has about the 90s. Now you move it to present day and you include two characters from TV shows that a lot of people clearly did not watch. And it failed. So uh, DC avoids that. So will DC continue to rule on TV where Marvel might continue to fail? Will they give up? That was, that was my, yeah, my, my uh, question subsequently is will comic TV shows, will they finally reduct will they slow them down you know i guess my pitch is is that if like anything if they fail enough i watch a lot of these youtube videos like this you know show uh, failed shows from the 80s this one was on for two showings they made eight episodes but the other you know six went in the bin because back in the day if they didn't have advertisers buying spots on the show or the ratings they had were all the way down here they just chucked them they didn't say here's nine episodes there you go whether it was good or it was bad or anybody didn't love them. So anyway, my two cents. But yes, I'm yeah. kind of I'm kind of with John uh, that I think I think Marvel will win the race even if this latest rollout of Gun is massively successful. He makes the best Superman movie we've seen since 1978, and you know if if he brings Wonder Woman back and it, it avoids the the perils and pitfalls of that last film. Um, but Marvel had this crazy ten year track record. But now they're flagging, and so do they dip and come back? I mean, I, I think that they're still going to come out on top. I, it might take 10 years. I mean, yeah. I'm hoping the movies they put out in the next two years are great. I yeah. want the next it'll, two Avengers movies to be fantastic. But It'll be hard for lightning to strike twice for them. That that 10-year run, I mean, you know. It's never, you know, it's never been done before. Some not, of the, not well, and, and not all of those movies. Was it 22 movies that were part of that whole not, run? 22 you or know, 23, yeah. And they weren't all great movies either. There yeah. were, you know, a couple somewhere numbers. between five and ten, you know, mid-level to okay. But yeah. but because they kept breadcrumbing pieces, right? You know, but now we're looking at fifteen years later when that really became popular. That you know, sometimes the movies just act as marketing materials for the next movie without right. being. Yeah. an actual quality movie so that was that was the big failure of, of of quantumania for me is that it was like well we got an ant-man movie coming up but we need to do this kang thing so let's smush them together and you got a mess of a movie i watched yeah, you know the recently. earlier movies you had those those post-credit scenes were just little nuggets you yeah know, just little, a tiny bit it you know then it started to morph into well this is actually a a cut scene from the next movie coming out and yeah, you, know, you start yeah, dropping yeah, yeah, yeah. characters into movies of us, you know, like, like when they threw black Panther into, was it civil war? That was, you know, yeah. like, you know, you just started to mash people together. And, um, you know, I liked it when they were like slow rolling out, you know, some of the movies weren't great, but mm -hmm. they were okay. And you got to the point where you couldn't miss anything. Right. Um, no, I, I I think the the biggest part too is people forget that um, after Endgame, Disney Plus wasn't even a thing yet, no. so they yeah. didn't have another rev uh, an avenue to put out other things. So we didn't have to deal with that. So yes, it feels different, but it is a different time. Just like hey, Netflix was making Disney shows with Daredevil and all those other characters. Remember that before Disney was making TV shows, which they 
barely got to admit that they were part of the MCU, just like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and all these other shows. So it was a different time. So it's like now that we're in this new era, new age, it will see it'll be interesting to see what Disney does to make it work. Uh, Bob Iger is going to be retiring for the second time, which is just crazy. And maybe there's a new era. He going to take Kathleen Kennedy with him. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, uh, Yeah. So we'll see where this is going to go, how much they're going to put into the TV shows versus movies where they actually can make a lot of money and then put it on Disney plus later. We'll see. And we'll see how this all plays out. I don't know. Kevin Feige's also been around for 25 years. I mean, really, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he was he was involved with Marvel back in in X Men in two thousand. Uh, yeah, he was, he and was we're, part of that deal. And and the X Men weren't a part of Disney, and Fantastic Four wasn't. So all right. these things will play out differently to see if people really care about the eighteenth X Men film, care about the the fourth iteration of Fantastic Four. Is it really going to be a big big deal, even if it's the best iteration of it? And then Spider Man, you know, does he stick around or does Sony I'll take him off? Right. We don't know but um with dc what they're doing dc's been so mishandled i don't know how it gets doesn't get better than how it's been especially with james gunn especially with the, the penguin which is getting accolades at the level of sopranos which makes me feel like they can manage uh uh uh, uh, uh that uh what's his name reeves um Scott Matt Reeves. Reeves. Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves. There you go. Yeah. His universe with that Batman and then bring on new versions that we've never gotten before DC. So I'm very excited about what James Gunn brings because if you say anything about James Gunn, he's got more creative chops than anybody at Marvel right now right. of what he's been able to deliver at well, different yeah. levels. I and mean, so look, I'm very excited. Look how you know. he took the Guardians of the Galaxy, which was akin to absolutely nothing, and oh. and made it a household name. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll, yeah. we'll see how that goes. But I'm very excited. I think DC, maybe in 10 years, maybe they are at the same point with Marvel where they had some success. And it's like, well, how do you keep hitting that? And Marvel's basically, you know, what what works? Maybe we get a Blade movie in 10 years. We yeah. don't know. Well, but I'm excited to see it. Yeah. DC, if, if they build it correctly this time and slow it down right. and don't yeah. panic, throw everything at the wall at once to try to catch up. Right. You know, where, yeah, where, was, where Marvel was successful is yeah. the, the two the two main leads, you know, with RDJ and Chris Evans, that that's what carried everything. And, right. you yeah. know, you get likable characters, you build the characters up, you take your time building the universe, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, DC it, it, didn't do that. It was a race to nowhere. They were like, let's cram these 90 things into this one film, and then we're caught up. They right. clearly yeah. thought it was working. And it yeah. hurt, your, hurt my brain to look at those movies. The, the slow-mo was ridiculous. The the CGI was beyond maddening. Yeah. Snyder, Snyder yeah. is leaving it, leaving it to Snyder to basically lead that universe was a big mistake. So yeah. I'm hoping James Gunn will say, I'll handle certain things, and then I'm bringing really awesome people to bring in those other things. I hope that works well but we'll see still, but i will both be relevant they'll both be yeah. relevant yeah but. i think so yeah i don't think it, i don't think it changes charlie in in you know in comics on tv i think it's just going to be have a unique role i think they will say we're not going to make things at a movie level budget on tv anymore right. i think that's just silly it's dumb it doesn't create revenue well, uh, which yeah. they desperately need yeah, nor should they connect um, yeah, the, no, yeah I, th- no. I think more to John's point. That's what's most relevant. Keep it separate. Make it uh, else worlds, like totally yeah, different exactly. thing. You know? I mean, the, you know, yeah. in the physical comics, they didn't have to connect. They shared a world, but it didn't have to be. Hey, this is Agents of Shields, and then Iron Man shows up. It, you know, and then that really is a that that was a cut scene from a movie and blah. Just make it. We're Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're doing, we're using high-tech gear to do this thing and that thing. There's going to be little nugget drops of things that comic fans will appreciate, like Lower Decks. Little nugget drops that diehard Trekkers will appreciate, but other people can just enjoy because it's not so... We want a 45-minute Werewolf by Night movie. We don't want an (laughs) eight-episode night series. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't remind me about So this one might be a little... So I'm going to skip the next one because I just worry that that's going to be a full-on tangent. So I'm going to say really quickly... You're hurting John's feelings. I know, but that's just... It's just a a weird thing. Will there be a new King of Streaming? Right now, we've got Netflix as the leader. Disney Plus. Max is not sure where we're going to go might get bought we've got peacock plus we got paramount plus we've got uh freebie going away we've got amazon prime uh we've got apple tv plus so with that gentlemen uh do you feel like 
uh, we're going to just basically get all of our stuff through one service going it's forward. Gonna turn right back into cable. yeah, yeah. It's going to be an Elon TV. Oh my He's god! Just... <laughs> I saw a streamer today because we get April and I were debating because we're watching Brooklyn Nine Nine and we were debating if there's an algorithm out there because it's her login they know that she's looking at some some additional training for tech for work that we're getting all these commercials for tech schools for work but uh one that is not related to that is there's a new streamer out for animated religious programming which made me want to throw up in the trash can next to what my, ne next to next to my side of the animated couch. religious programming are exactly. they just gonna play prince of persia on loop because other it's than that a, uh, it was a safe programming for kids but we're not gonna the go prince of egypt uh, for me DreamWorks? Yeah. yeah. Prince yeah, of Egypt. Tales. That's it. Prince of Egypt. Um, I'll, and Veggie Tales. There you I'll, go. I'll start on I'll start on this one. I think whether you like it or you don't like it, um, I think it comes down to a, a, a the difference of who can throw more money at it and who's got more money than Amazon. You know what I mean? It's in your home anyway. Apple. Yeah. Well, but more than Amazon? Apple's who's, oh who's, who's Apple's worth three trillion dollars, Charlie. They can crush Amazon with a, a, a but, their but, boots. But Microsoft's my, bigger. Yeah. My my question is why aren't they? Because they don't want to do what Amazon is doing and spending five hundred million dollars right. on so Lord that, of the Rings where they aren't seeing a return on investment on it. That's why I think again, that's why I think Bezos is going to find the secret sauce to hmm. squeeze or absorb. Well, uh, I, I don't like it. I love Paramount Plus. You know me. Here's the question it, I have, because um, I don't know the answer to this. And you guys, Todd, you probably would be the one. Um, who is considered the king of streaming right now? Is there one above and beyond? It's Netflix. Is it Netflix? Netflix? They, 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 they have more. They've had more growth. They are more profitable. They have more users internationally. And they have survived the Disney onslaught. Yeah, Disney they, had to add in ads. Disney had to add in so many price ads. They've had to add in so many services true. that, quite honestly, Disney, they don't put out the amount of content that Netflix does. Netflix wins because they put something out for everybody, every language, every every culture, all every those, language. All those, all those movies mm. that my wife watches on the plane she, <laughs> because she loves that. It's like because it's like the Hallmark Channel. They, they well, it's like what cheap. Love is Blind. That is what's hot in our chat. It works. People talk about that. They don't talk about the most recent Nat Geo special. They don't talk about the the Mass Singer and yeah. Disney. Unfortunately, with their their vault. Nobody cares about that except for parents with kids, and they they stopped caring about that a long time ago. Right. So I don't no, know. Disney's I, yeah. Disney Plus had the world according to Jeff Goldblum though, and that was that was you know. Is that still a thing? No, it wasn't. But it was <laughs> their big thing they were pushing, and um, you know most of the Disney Plus original content like that is is Duncan. It doesn't catch on. You yeah. Know? No. And Disney, I think, in some ways. The, I'm not going to say they like misadvertised, but I think there was a intentional misleading. Like you had this thought of, Hey, everything Disney's ever done, you're going to have right. access to on here. But yeah, right. there's so many, you know, I mean, these are, you know, corny things from our childhood, but the old like Disney channel or the Disney Sunday movies, you know, crazy right. movies like Lots and of Luck with Martin Mull and Annette Funicello. And, and I remember like, Hey, where's, Where's the new Leave It to Beaver? Where's these crazy they're, Martin Ball and Annette? Where's the Annette Funicello movies? They're Where's never, the... they're never ever going to give you Song of the South, and it's you know, a good thing that they won't. And, but the, but no, okay, well you had to go there. <laughs> they even took the ride out that it was baby. Well, where is Willow season one, which well, they made? Right. It happen. is gone. Right. Uh, yeah. Same thing with uh, you know they the way make that, they? sold off Star Trek. They made, they made it, well, and no they said there's no evidence they took it away. Oh, he didn't, I didn't know they made. It. That's why you don't know because they made it and they made it go away. They kind of. How will I ever Thanos know if Willow survives? I'll never know, and I can't sleep to this day. Yeah, you know, there's um, a, quite a few shows. They, they oh, well, they, they did it to Batwoman, except they didn't make actually release Batwoman, right? Yeah, they. Well, well that, that was DC. Was yeah, they, yeah, no, they that that was a that was a uh, tax. Uh, liability yeah. that they could um, they could solve out. Well, yeah. I was just or saying, Coyote yeah. versus Acme on DC, right? Well, I, Disney, yeah, right. that was another one. I mean, we don't have to get into it because we all know this that you know when they obtained the the big licenses that they obtained, you know, Lucasfilm being like the big one, and you right. know, Pixar. They've started putting out not great content, mediocre. You can worse. only 
go back and rewatch the original trilogy of Star Wars a certain number of times. You can only watch the Clone Wars a certain number of times. You know, the new content for Star Wars, for the most part, is not blowing. It's a lot more missed than it is yeah. hit, and it's not keeping people there. And I, I also what what I do like about Netflix still, and I understand why Disney and some other streamers use the model of, uh, you know, weekly releases instead of putting it all out there. Yep. Netflix does contribute to the binge watch, which is still popular. Very you know? popular. Like, yeah, very popular. You know, I haven't watched the the next part of Cobra Kai yet, but I'm excited to know that they're all there. If I'm going to go right. watch it, I can just watch them all. I don't have to space it out over eight weeks. And that's the other problem with some of those Disney shows, you know, Marvel shows, whatever. Yeah. They're not interesting enough to keep you in it for that long. That's very true. Yeah, you get to the cliffhanger at the end of an episode and you're like, <laughs> Som- yeah, sometimes yeah. it'll snag you, but other yeah. times it'll just be like, but, not so much. Yeah. That's the other side of it, though, that if a show at Netflix doesn't catch viewers in three weeks, it gets canceled. So this basically does binging help or is basically, hey, here's 85 shows. I hope you catch this one show that maybe they didn't advertise. It didn't show up on your thing and then you'll miss it. So I don't I don't know if binging is a good thing because everything becomes bingeable eventually and you can watch it on your own time. You don't have to watch it day one, but But not but having a show die because you didn't watch in the first three weeks. That feels like, well, nobody can manage. Who was it? uh, Who has suits that was so popular that they brought the show back? Was that Netflix? Netflix? Netflix. I mean, it was a oh, it was a heritage well, show with a twenty four yeah. episodes a season on right. USA. It came right. back, and people want more of that. But it where caught, it's like uh, it caught, which is yeah, you can never predict something like that. Yeah. Match. Um, but people. That's why Matlock's so popular, back. Charlie. I keep telling you, Matlock is huge. John Matlock is huge. Kathy I mean, Bates, she the, is tearing it up. The is she related to the Andy yeah. Griffith Matlock? Is she like a granddaughter or something? No, 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 she is not. That's that sucks. Is her name Matlock or is it like the name of a law firm or something? That is the na- name she uses on the show is Matlock. She okay. even mentions it. Yeah, like the lawyer on TV, but oh. she is not related. Oh, to okay. now that's so. that's funny. So the real answer to the question is uh, not only to the, the Netflix bit. And I, I, I realize I have a wobbly leg to stand on with the Amazon thing. I thought somehow the money would make it magic because everybody it's in your home anyway. They just they need to purchase up a show, a something of suits or whatever it is, or just keep throwing shit against the wall and seeing what sticks, find a show that catches big and then produce it. That would, that would get people to watch it more. But again, they already have your money. That's the problem. They already have your money because of Amazon prime. For- well, they have your money until you say is $200 a year worth the free delivery. Yeah, we're getting there, but you're right. <laughs> yeah. Netflix, Netflix, you know, to John's point, people love streaming. John, I know in your family, your daughter, you and your you and your daughter, or you and other will watch The Office fifty times. You're like, well, we're starting The Office again. That's on Peacock, but Peacock has ads, which makes me crazy because we're watching Brooklyn Nine Nine right now, and I'm sick of those damn. Just buy it on Fandango and watch it there without ads. I suppose that's going to be the next step. So, um, but yeah, T- Todd's got a point. Netflix has ticked all the box to kind of keep the wolves at the door. You know what I mean? But can it last forever? Can it last until something else comes out that does it better? That's yeah, we won't know. Right? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 what do they call it? The ad streaming television service with like Crackle, Freebie, uh, <laughs> all those services well, here's have my been prediction. big. Here's what I would predict. Bring okay. If there is a new king of streaming, it will be something that doesn't currently exist. Correct. Yes. New player. Anybody else that's currently in the market isn't going to. It'll do be it. the the Paul Brothers streaming network because that was so big on the, Netflix. The, the Mike Pillow Mike guy we'll, we'll put together. Oh, so it's gonna be somebody in the Trump. <laughs> Mike the Trump, Lundahl Trump, from uh, Shakopee, Trump? Minnesota, bringing it to you. Oh my God, he's from where you live. Oh, where you know, Charlie, Charlie. I have been to his factory and 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 seen his pillows to be sold. Did you did you did you yes. pee on one of them? Because I would have. Did you well, see a ice pillow, or are those only in Flint, Michigan? He's a oh. <laughs> where the where the where the pillows are assembled. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We don't need to talk about that. But yes, we'll see with Mike Lendell has his pillow network. We also have Chick-fil-A starting their own streaming network. So, oh you know God. what? At this point, it's going to be Chick-fil-A is going to be the, the well, leaders well, of I the streaming know. networks. You didn't know that, Mark? You didn't know that? You don't know that, John? No. Chick-fil-A. I, I, yes. 
Oh, I, I, I there, there are a, a okay, handful chicken of chicken themed shows. I really despise, and Chick Fil A is really close to the top. Is it yeah. Candace Cameron Bure like running it? <laughs> it's going to be basically yes. It's going to be like Hallmark and Chick Fil A streaming entertainment. They actually have some shows. Even more wholesome than Hallmark movies. <laughs> is there a Mark, uh, you know, you know, John. I will send you a link oh, in the you. chat. And you can check out all of your Chick Fil A streaming entertainment. It's called yeah, Chick Fil A Play. You get another strike if you call him Mark a third time. So Chick Fil A Play. <laughs> Chick Fil A well, Play. So look, you okay. get like a free month of Chick Fil A Play with like a certain number of combo meals you buy in a month. Or I'm something. guessing if you get like, like yeah, I'm guessing if you get their combo right. meal, you get. You, it. Go, you remember Demolition go. Man when Taco Bell took over every restaurant? In yep. The future oh, they're in the three month, shells. Maybe, maybe yep. Chick Fil A will be the new streaming king. Right in five years. Right, I'm that, guessing it will be. But no streaming on Sundays. No strong. Nope. <laughs> nope. You have to sit in silence. You'll be looking at. Mind. You'll be looking. You'll just get like hymns. You'll yep. be getting like uh, the the U.S. flag with you oh, know the, the, like uh, the, the yes the crackling fireplace. Yeah, all right. Exactly. All right. Well, let's, okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yes. Will DVDs and VHS come back like vinyl? I will say, not VHS because VHS is garbage. DVDs and physical media, 100%, because you said it yourself, those streaming prices just keep going up. And I mean, I have over in my, over in the other corner, you can see a part of it uh, here in my corner right here is all the boxes of my Heritage Star Trek series. I have those discs, but as Todd has mentioned, discs rot and they fall apart. So I'll have to buy them all again someday. But as prices as the prices of those streaming services continue to rise, or your favorite show, it's always been on Netflix. Now it's over here, and I don't want to spend the money just to watch that show. And I gotta I gotta keep doing it because I don't own it. I don't own it. You know, Todd, we've had other people on the show who have hosted with us who are really strong disc people. I know uh, Rich Davenport is a big disc guy. Uh, friend. Uh, um, uh, Rick Reed, who we've worked with, he's a super big, like own like 2,000, you know, four four or 500,000 DVDs, whatever it is. It's the only way to um, to actually have access to the thing you want when you want it. Guaranteed, unless your house burns up in a fire, um, that you're going to be, I've got DVDs I'm sure I should have hold on to, held on to, but I've sold them at flea markets and yard sales because I'm like, when the hell am I ever going to watch this thing? And it hasn't come back to bite me in the ass, but it will at some point. You know what I mean? Because even if you buy it on streaming, I bought a lot of stuff on streaming. I'm sure it'll be like, well, sorry, this company went out of business. Here's a refund. I was lucky that that happened, that I got a refund because Tar Target used to have their own video library thing. And when they shut that down, I, I got a refund on some things. But the disc is the only way. It just adds in the inconvenience. Yeah, video of, library. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that I have to take a disc and put it in a thing and push a button. We're so lazy as a culture. We can't even handle that. I mean, back in our parents' time, they had TVs with no remote and they were black and white. You know, ask your uh, Charlie had a set of pliers to turn the channel yeah. on my TV downstairs. I mean, it, but yeah. I guess the question idea. becomes how many people actually own a media player? VHS, DVD, Blu ray. When was I, the last time you saw one in a store? I, and why are 4K Blu ray players $180? They are all have, over the Goodwill yeah. shelves when I was there. I have, uh, yeah. I have a VCR now because Brian Cole's mother was getting rid of a bunch of shit. So he, we were having breakfast and he handed it over to me with no remote, which means it's just on a shelf in my basement. But someday I'll need to play that, that, that videotape that was a recording of one of my high school musicals and I'll really want to see it. So I'm all set. <laughs> about you, John? Do you have a Blu-ray player? Do you have a 4K player? What do you got? No. Um, I think one of my old gaming systems works as a blu-ray player i think it's a what, what gosh xbox one maybe that i still have yes that that's a, really i think new, that's a blu-ray player maybe blu on it um maybe I have some blu-ray still and a handful of dvds but um i don't ever 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 use yeah them. i uh, if, if they're not available if what i want to watch it on streaming i was like all right i don't watch it yeah. you know it's weird but um i i don't know if they'll come back or not um I mean, they're still around, but I guess question is, will they will they surge in popularity 
the way they were and not just be I'm, a five dollars. How will they over. though? That's the question. I'm gonna say no. We have so much content made these days. Are yeah. you gonna get the real housewives of New York on DVD? No, you aren't. I mean, what are you gonna be getting? Disney Plus, all these streamers, that content is never going to well, media. Maybe does maybe a few shows on Disney Plus. They've been starting but, to, yeah. They've been starting to. But they've, but they've still it's streaming. like yeah. but these lines are going down. They're they're shutting down. So it becomes like, sure, they could come back, but it's gonna be like the top. 300 shows it's not going to be the top thousand shows and you're basically saying digital only or media physical media only works for x amount and the rest is you just have to say unless you like pirated it it's it's gone you have to hope a streamer has it so i just feel like people are like overwhelming the uh, or thing like yeah everything's going to be digital and thank god i got i'm like yeah because you're going to watch the same 300 films you already owned beyond that then you're set nothing at post like 2015 you can watch anymore because it just didn't come out on a disc. I think if they come back, it'll be like a fad. Um, right. Yeah. Lived. Even like vinyl. I know vinyl. Criterion does back. stuff. Vinyl does stuff. Yeah. I feel like yeah. vinyl is still fairly like niche. You, know? you can I, get I vinyl at, at, at Target, but the albums yeah. are 30, 35 bucks. So well, it's, it's yeah. super niche. Yeah. I just don't, you know, not when you can spend, you know, less than 20 bucks a month and get Spotify or Apple or, or music or whatever. And, yeah, yeah. No. My C- my CDs, what ones I still have, are in a box in the garage. I j- I just use the 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 Amazon Prime Unlimited. All but I would day say VHS music. definitely no. I no mean, chance. eight tracks never came back. Cassette tapes are not going to come back. I did but, see that the uh, Alien uh, Romulus was coming out the VHS version. And I thought that was very cute, oh, but nobody cheap. wants to watch VHS. It's it's dirt bag. It's gross. You know it's what disgusting. It is? it is a it's something to go on your shelf. It's like, yeah. oh, yes, I have a, it's I have a hipster. It's yes. Yeah, it's art. Yeah, it's a. It's I want a, the clamshell a, Disney case with my Blu ray. Yes. I feel like. <laughs> no, I'll never take out. VHS coming back would feel like a Portlandia episode to me. You know? Yes. <laughs> it's the hipster. Yeah. It's the hipster the revenge. Hipster yeah. Revenge. Um, yeah. And it's funny because then you're basically saying, well, the barons of media have to allow these things to go to physical media. And unless they want it to go, it's not going. So you can demand it. You can say all this stuff. And if guess what? If the apocalypse happens and we have no power, how are you powering your media player to watch it? If we ain't got power, we ain't gotten media. We don't got anything. So I'm like, I don't know why people are thinking like, yeah, because yeah, if the zombies come or the apocalypse comes, you're not gonna be sitting around watching. You know, Star Wars. You're going to be looking for food and hiding in a bomb shelter. I'll be watching Zombieland. Remember, what are the rules? You know, right? Yeah, exactly. You better do that, John. Yeah, (laughs) because I've I've got my copies of uh, Two Guys, a Girl, and a Pizza Place. Um, I will be lucky if that happens. Exactly. We'll see how that goes. Oh yeah. Uh, Last question: Um, Will early two thousands nostalgia be huge? It always will be because it, it always goes in that that. 30 year cycle because all of us are mid nineties teens. We became adults in the mid middle part of the nineties. That's what's very big right now. You slap on an extra 10 years. You've got the, you've got the class of the high school that was a decade behind us. So yeah, it'll be huge in the same way. Some things are evergreen, huge, like the eighties is evergreen huge every even though we were all children we saw oh i remember gi joe cartoons or transformers or you know the super friends but that's still us gen xers you know that kind of stuff so you know in 10 years the you know the millennial kids who are younger obviously they're a generation between of our kids will be hitting the 40-ish vi you know like uh my stepdaughter turned 30 last month which was very difficult for april um but in another 10 years she'll be 40 potentially with kids of her own who is to say but looking back on that same kind of shit like oh gosh remember uh, name me something that was big in the early 2000s hannah montana i don't know spongebob exactly um will be looked at with the same reverence as where we you know fiddle faddle all over something from the 90s that came back that was huge which i'm drawing a blank there was something recently 
Twister. I don't know something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Twister was the '90s, Charlie. Sadly, that's, a, that's why that's we are out of touch. We do not know yeah. these kids. I mean, if I judged it by my son, I mean, he grew up and he was born in 2005. I mean, we'd be like like the Wiggles. I mean, Wonder Pets. I can't think of something that in the 2000s. Oh, the, but John, your kids might have been yeah, in that. Where well, your kids were in the yeah. 2000s era, oh, right? Yeah, you're thinking teams, the wrong yeah. way because their stuff is going to be more social media and online related oh, stuff rather yeah. than like TV shows and, right. and whatnot, because my kids will talk about like old, uh, something called Hatena. They'll, you know, it, it was something where you would go online and have these little, it's like something that was before vines. I think, you know, vines are, are something those little, you know, right. pre TikToks. Well, yeah. Um, <clears throat> they're more into that sort of thing than traditional legacy, like TV shows, cartoons, there'll be some things, but right. I think the things that they're going to really be into are going to be different altogether from like TV, you know, movies. Right. Uh, well, cultural I, I, will, thing, you know? I will put a like <clears throat> thing around YouTube didn't even launch until 2005. So even right. if that like online was still not like a huge thing that people were getting into until like probably late 2010s. Right. So even there, I mean, like, I don't know what people like. We're like, we're getting to like Neopets and weird, like online games. Right. And, uh, you know, those, okay. those weird early internet things that were <laughs> <laughs> hot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's weird because uh, it, it's, they're going to be at a, like a cusp of like, they were on like everything was on a service they could watch. Right. But then it started going to online. And I think like, I'm like, when did streaming heart start? It was like 2020, 2010 with like right. Netflix and like uh, maybe when they started their streaming. So we're at a point where we're going to start seeing that cusp where things were streaming. But yeah. yeah, I think that was around 2010 where things went to streaming. So yeah, right. we were still in a uh, cable life, right. cable Cord cutting didn't exist until like mid 2015s. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, we got to wrap this up because uh, our, our guest needs to be in other places. Uh, Johnny, I know that you're uh, Johnny Rose. Pardon me. I know that you're somewhat a ghost uh, on the online community. Oh, I'm a total so, ghost now. So uh, yeah, that's why you're wearing black, your ghost protocol. Um, but thanks for, thanks for coming in. Uh, go out and enjoy your evening. Uh, we'll wrap up the show in a minute here. So with two fingers. Uh, that is it for our show. Oh my goodness, Charlie. We made it 500 episodes. We have 500 more to look at. Oh my goodness. I will be what, 59 years what, old. What happens at a thousand? Do we explain? Is it like Logan's run and podcast? Uh, the internet breaks. I don't know. It's oh like Y2K. God. If you hit a thousand episodes of that extra digit, just roll us over That'd and we like, explode. Like the, I the, don't know. The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror where they spoofed Y2K. It just sure. it, it started flashing. So, uh, friends, thank you for joining us. This has been just a wild journey uh, for those who have been with us from the beginning. There's got to be somebody. Uh, and everybody we've met along the way, people who have discovered us, people who have listened to our spinoff shows, Code 47, Co-op Mode, Holocron Chronicles, subscribers to the Patreon with all the shows that come along with that, The Facts of Geek Life, Spinner Rack, Spotlight, Projects that Mark will surprise us with from time Walk to time. Walk nerdy with me. Walk nerdy with coming me. Coming through. Coming through. Deep and dark. You're coming through your uh, neighborhood. But we're very grateful. I'm very grateful to Todd, my friend of almost 30 years, uh, that, that this was his idea to get this rolling. And it's been the thread that has kept us and a lot of other people together. So it's great. Todd, love you, babe. Where do people find you out there? Absolutely. Charlie, thank you so much. Because you know what? This hasn't been easy. We have been friends, but friendship is not easy. And we know that. And we make it work Friend, yeah, in our right. weird, strange way. Uh, and that is fun. And it's rewarding. And it's great to be where, in a place where we're at. Too many aren't because they have lost track with their friends. But with that, I would say, you know what, Charlie? I'm going to thank out uh, Schloss Ritter. Man, that dude has been with us for so long been so awesome schloss i know you are hesitant to share your real life with us but we appreciate you and yeah. we salute you as part you of our bet. group and our patreons but whoever, with that charlie you might be <laughs> exactly we think we know but we don't want to give it away uh with that charlie it's been interesting because we talked about last week where you can find us and we're adding a new place this week yes and, and we, that we, is we both did it <laughs> 
the blue sky because you can actually dm us and you can change accounts fairly easy within blue sky so Ooh, at blue sky i'm actually revealing myself todd Oxtra on blue sky it's bold. at secret fringe unite on blue sky at t Oxtra at secret fringe unite on threads and that's the places you can find me i love it todd signed up yesterday afternoon i was like fine uh so i did the same but what's nice is that i have the same handle on threads instagram and now blue sky at the c3 t-h-e-c-e-e-t-h-r-e-e -E -E -E. um so we are there you can dm us uh over on blue sky add all three accounts please we want to uh interlect that uh, connectivity it's a great way for us to meet new people that we want to bring into the secret friends uh family not only the geek discussion piece which happens over on discord at some levels on Facebook, but we focus on Discord, uh, which is a great place to add us in. Um, but message us because we want to meet other creators that we can collaborate with. Um, so yeah, the Discord is awesome. Please come join us. I do also run a Discord uh, for Star Trek fans, which uh, we call United Trekkers of Michigan, but we had to call it something, so it doesn't matter where you are. Come join us. With that, here's to 500. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. 500! Oh my! 500. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and podcast services around the galaxy, as well as video on our YouTube channel. You can support Secret Friends Unite by becoming a Patreon member, get bonus programs and more over at patreon.com slash secretfriendsunite. Join our Discord community for even more discussions on all things geek. For all the latest updates on Secret Friends Unite, make sure to follow us on threads at secret.friends.unite and visit secretfriendsunite.com. Find our merchandise at TeePublic and Redbubble. Thanks for listening and may the force live long and prosper.